So, nice and gently as you start up, give, give, give yourself plenty of time to loosen up a little bit, to focus your attention. So, start with your feet, below your hips, wait a little bit forwards if you can do that comfortably, and just soften, release in your knees and your hips, so you get a sense, slight sense of sinking down. With your attention primarily here, in the centre part of your body, just start to turn a little bit, let that movement move up your body, rib cage and shoulders, and finally to your arms. Try and have a, an idea of how much space it feels as though there is within your body to move. <clears throat> what we want to try and do is to just let the, the movement increase to fill that space, but not to, not, not to strain against it. As we find our posture and as bodies warm up, we will get more space to move in. Try and feel supported as you stand, move. It's clear that our legs are supporting us and the ground beneath our feet. I want to feel that your back supports the front of your body, a slight feeling of belly, solar plexus, chest and ribs hanging just a little bit. More subtly, just aware of how your body is naturally supported from within. So that will bring our attention to skeleton, big bones of our legs, pelvis, spine, ribs, and <laughs> increasingly the area around this, the, the skeleton, as though the soft tissue on the sort of outer edge of your body is, is beginning to sort of soften and to flow inwards and downwards. Hips dropping back, you feel your pelvis hanging slightly from the spine. And the combination of these things, the, the support from within the body, we look to align ourselves with the pull of gravity, we want to drop our centre of gravity, helps us to, to, to build a structure that is less stiff, okay, leading to more space. And one where we can begin to feel that we're upright without straining, almost as though um, our heads are floating up. And this in its turn leads to an, an increase in movement within the body, the movement of breathing and digestion and all the various metabolic processes require movement, which is most of them. And again, that's a little bit more subtly, the movement itself, the flow, the energy that begins to build, they're very connected and cohesive way. Another aspect that helps with that feeling of connection is this awareness of the centre part of the body. What would you say about how it when you turn there, you start to feel that movement going up through your body. You may also notice a connection downwards to your legs, your knees, your feet. We don't want to have too much movement in the legs. We don't want to twist the knees like this. We make a, a, a little bit of a change. But the key thing here is to recognise that when we look out, as it were, from the centre of the body, we can touch all parts of the body. We sometimes describe this area as being like the hub of a wheel. The spokes all lead into the hub and then radiate out to the various parts of the, the rim of the wheel. 
So scent of air of, the, of, of our body is the area that also drops towards the ground. And it becomes in, an increasingly important point of focus for our attention. Begin to realize that when we can bring our attention into our body, and the more specific we can get about that attention, it could just be a general thing, but now I'm talking a little bit more precise about where we bring our attention. And the act of doing that has a very calming effect on our mind once we get used to it. It is practice, but as we get more used to doing this, so we will begin to <clears throat> find that, that attaining just for a moment or two that that little bit of stillness, that little bit of quietness that's such a characteristic of this art becomes a little bit smoother, a bit more um, accessible. You may also notice that a rhythm beginning to build. That too is something that helps with this feeling of connection through the body, sort of resonance with the rhythm. So one of the qualities that that, that builds in the movements and the postures, along with that increasing feeling of space within within the, the, the body, is that is this sense of our bodies as, as, as one unit, that body and mind as, as, as one unit, rather than being slightly dispersed and not quite sure where we are. Breathing come in just as it comes naturally. If you experience with these arts and in the past, with myself or somebody else, you've been offered breathing methods, breathing patterns, and they're comfortable for you, then by all means follow them. But it's not the only aspect of the, the art, and you're not comfortable focusing on your, your, your breathing, focus on the feeling of your weight sinking down or the rhythm of the movement. Your, your body knows how to breathe. Raise your arms a little. So no higher than shoulder height, your elbows hanging down lower, a bit more open across your chest. Try not to lift up everything. Try not to lift up the shoulder, but your hips drop, your rib cage drop towards your hips, shoulders drop towards your ribs. Let the hands drop down. Put one foot in front. Try and keep the width of the step. Begin to move your weight foot to foot and let your body, your hips, waist, follow that movement just, to, just with a gentle turn. And you can feel that we begin to generate a powerful movement from the ground by moving our weight a little bit up push or bounce in the legs. Not too big a movement, don't let your weight go too far forwards or back, it's not necessary. Try not to stiffen up in your knees. But again, perhaps a nice feeling of rhythm building so that eventually we begin to realize that what happens in our feet, for instance, will have an effect on, say, our shoulders, whatever. I told in Tai Chi, when one part of the body is in motion, the whole body is in motion. Good, and then on the other side, so, Again, don't have your feet too narrow. We'll look more closely at these stances soon for the moment. It's important that you feel 
comfortable with whatever stance that you take. <laughs> Good. Excuse me while I get a drink. So that point about feeling comfortable with, with, with the stance is changing in the posture that we make, our ongoing entire chi. They're often quite subtle, quite small changes, but they're going to have a profound effect on our, our, our bodies. We start to use our bodies in a, in, in a very different way to how, they, to how we normally use them. And so it should always be done very gently. We have where we are, and then we have the sort of supposed ideal of the posture over there and um, we shouldn't be forcing ourselves to move to to too quickly this is a an ongoing process in touch so we want to have our feet as we describe it hip width apart so you've got this sense of parallel lines from feet to hips to shoulders giving support to your hips giving support to to, to your shoulders your feet are close together so it gets very wobbly that, that width can be measured from the outside of your foot or anywhere in between there and the inside of your foot. So it's a little bit of variation depending on what's most comfortable to you. <clears throat> from the side, if you just gently rock your weight forwards and backwards, if you feel a bit sort of um, wobbly with that, just, just let your hand rest on a wall or a desk or something to give you a bit of stability while you're thinking about this. Just feel the movement of your weight from front to back and see if you can just arrive at a point where you're more upright, more in line with, 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 with the pull of gravity. For instance, if you imagine you've got a straight line down through your body, which of course doesn't exist. I'll show you, imagine this is the straight line. From there to there is, is what we're doing at the moment. In the theory, there's a there's a place where I could just get, get get the pole to rest on the ground and walk away. In practice, it's going to be much harder, of course, but there's this theoretical alignment with the pull of gravity. It's not a fixed thing. Just even get a sense that there, as you move forwards and backwards, there's a there's an area where where the weight settles in your feet, where it feels like your weight is being pulled down into your feet rather than slightly forwards or, or backwards. So we align ourselves with, with, with the pull of gravity a bit closer so you can see. And then just allow the hips to drop back. So a slight feeling in lower back and hips and buttocks of overhanging. Almost like you're sitting on top of a fence. When we do that, we 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 push our bottoms back and we would lean forwards to 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 to, to balance that in Tai Chi but we're not leaning forwards. But still that same sense of dropping through that here. And again, that's quite difficult. And with with this, with any of the, the, <clears throat> the postures that we take. Sometimes it can be very useful to again support yourself, to give you a little chance to experiment to to to, to find where your alignment is, we gradually get a feeling of our weight dropping down, rooting down. Now, from this position, push your shoulders up a little bit and see if you can just let them drop. Sharp. It feels so your shoulders are dropping into your rib cage. So again, we get that awareness of being supported from within the body. We're going to try the same thing with, <clears throat> with our hips. Just push up very gently and then drop down. Push up and drop down. It's quite likely as you do this, you'll feel a, feel a little wobble because you won't necessarily get, get the weight in exactly the right place. Again, support yourself. When you just focus on that feeling of just dropping through your hips, how that affects your ribs and your shoulders again. And just this sense again of your center of gravity dropping. And, and then just slow that movement down. 
So from the top position, see if you can remember how it felt to just drop. And imagine that happening again, the releasing feeling, the softening feeling in the center of your body and just feel yourself dropping and then feel the push-up come in as you sort of slowly bounce off the ground. When you come up, don't lock your knees back. So don't lock any of the joints, I, 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 ideally. And just focus on this rhythm of the movement, expanding out of the ground and sinking into it. Expanding and contracting. <clears throat> Bring your hands around as though you're cradling the ball. And as you push up, let the expansion Push your elbows out, draw your hands up. Turn them over as though they're draped over the ball and then just let your hips drop. So you're pressing the ball down into it. So again, expand in and contract it. Have your hands fairly close to your body. And this is the exercise rooting down. So name is taken from the act of Trying to allow your center of gravity to drop. And this, the combination of, of the various factors of the posture, the alignment with, up, with, with the pull of gravity, the hips just sinking back and dropping. So center of gravity dropping down. The awareness of how our body na is naturally supported will start to, to come together to allow a posture that has that space for the movement, for the flow of the energy, it's more stable, more sustainable. But again, this is a profound change for the body. We often stiffen up in the joints like our knees and our shoulders. We often overused in some ways, certain muscles and certain parts of the body. And as we increasingly get that sense of releasing, of softening, not just in our hips, we describe it really all through the body. So that means that other parts of the body will begin to engage. Other muscles, tendons, ligaments, fascia, the bones themselves. So again, it takes time for those those areas to begin to work well, to condition. They're always going nice and gently. If you need to rest at any point, then do so. Yeah, but when a, a muscle gets fatigued, it tends to stiffen up. And we're, we're trying to encourage the, the opposite. So if you get to here and your legs are a bit stiff, give them a little shake, and that can help just to to improve the circulation, to release some of the tightness. Now, sit down, turn your hands so your fingers are facing outwards, away from your shoulders, pushing up and then sinking down. This is the wild goose. So there's an, we can imagine the, the picture of the bird in flight. And if that conveys some kind of quality of smoothness, of grace, maybe even the rhythm again, then let those qualities sort of imbue the movement. And it's a good example of how we can begin to use images to influence our movements. Tai Chi and Qi Gong are intentional movements. So we we actively seek to bring body and mind together. And one of the ways we do that is through this use of imagery. If you find an image doesn't work for you, if you find it distracting, then focus on something else, maybe the rhythm of the movement that you can feel in, in, in your body, for instance the way that the movement is transmitted from your feet up through the rest of your body and back down again. There's plenty of other things to focus your attention and your intention to. 
This time, your hands drop down, crossing in front of your belly. Again, elbows going out. This time, drawing your fingers around in a nice smooth circle. And then that's this part in the clouds. This lovely feeling of an expansive movement up from the ground. Very gently, not stretching, leaving just a little bit of room there, and then sinking. So again, we're trying to cultivate that space within the body with that sense of movement and flow. So we actually have three elements here. The physical side of the movement, our bodies, our attention and intention, our minds, and the movement, the flow, the energy. We're seeking a, a harmony between what sometimes referred to as the three jewels, the three treasures. This is not mind over matter. One more time, the part in the clouds. In the next exercise, you're going to focus your attention mostly on one side of your body. So pick a side, push up, and this time again, your elbow drawing up, your hand going up a little bit, winding around, so you're plucking something off a tree, fall down. It's called dragon plucks the stars from the sky. Move your attention slowly to the other side and same thing. Try not to rush the changeover. And it's very common to do that. And we can begin to avoid that by just paying attention to the process of the change. Our attention goes down into our foot and then we, we sort of pan our attention across through the belly, to hip to the other foot and then we start again so like a, a camera in a documentary slowly panning across the landscape so there's this little moment where it appears that there's no movement happening you will become aware of movements within the body it becomes a bit like a comma in a sense and it's just Expanding that idea of spaciousness to include not just our body, but our, our minds as well, trying not to be in a rush. This leads us to a, a quality within the movement that we can sometimes describe as stillness. There's a calm, unhurried rhythm, flow, beginning to develop. One more on each side. And then your hand drop down. It's that slight feeling of your hips hanging back. So in that movement, allowing gravity to just draw our hips down, which it becomes more possible when we've got the alignment, allowing gravity to pull our center of gravity down, and the, the push up that really comes from the ground and the springiness of our legs that gradually develops, we have a very dynamic quality downwards and upwards. And we want this to be a constant within, within all of the movements. So in the last four, ex the first four exercises, we were actively dropping down and pushing up, dropping down and pushing up. For the next couple of exercises, we don't go up and down in, 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 in our hips. We want to try and maintain this posture of dropping back. So you you will gradually become aware of 
a, a feeling of pulling there again like you're sitting on top of a fence just aware of the space be, be, below your hips and try not to resist the pull of gravity and this is where an awareness of structure and how we're supported by our skeleton and so on all the things that i was talking about earlier actually comes in useful because it's quite difficult just to allow a feeling of dropping in, in in certain parts of the body if you feel that you're going to fall over as a consequence nobody wants to fall over and once again you know feel feel free to, to, to support yourself it can be interesting because this gives you a chance just to explore the, the, the subtleties of what is going on and again remember this is an ongoing process and you could argue this is what we're, what we're practicing tai chi for so the next two exercises, we don't go up and down, but try to retain that 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 feeling of of allowing movement downwards through your body, not fighting against the the, the pull of gravity. Bring your hands to your sides, and to start with two movements, raising your hands, and this time it's come a little bit above your head, and then down. And then once again, raise it, but this time letting your elbows drop, push out sideways and back. Try and keep the movements nice and steady, equal in the expanding and the contracting stages. And try not to put your hands behind your shoulders. It should be here, slightly in front, not here or here. And start to just focus your attention on the sensations of movement in in your back, kind of almost massaging quality lengthways and then sideways. It's time that you push out, turn gently. Don't lose that feeling in, in, in your back. So try not to um, tighten up or twist in your back. Turn the other way. Turn is really in your center of your hips. And then facing forwards and pushing out. So we have pushing in four directions. So remember, soften your knees, your body supported by your legs. Go back to the beginning, pushing up. Down, center of gravity, dropping the pelvis, hips hanging. Front of your body, hanging from your back. You could almost imagine the air of your skeleton being like a mannequin dummy in a shop window and various soft tissues of of, of your, your your body sort of draped over that mannequin to give it shape. It's not to say that those that soft tissue, those muscles aren't being used at all. It's just a just a sort of a change our view of our body. If we want to bring our intention into the movement, then it can be useful to, to take up a, a different approach, a different view to work with. That soft tissue will develop a, an elasticity, a springiness. But again, we need to give ourselves time for that conditioning to take place. The more it does, the more we will get that sense of that third element of the flow, the energy of the movement building. And we seek a harmony between mind, body and energy, we seek a harmony in the movement, the flow, 
trying not to resist the movements. Again, just letting the movement fill whatever space is available, wherever that space happens to be. More round. Then let your arms drop to their full length. And again, focusing on one side, an expansion there this time, pushing your arm out, drawing your fingers back gently. Swing your hand up until it's in line with your nose and your navel, and then straight down. Again, trying to let your shoulder drop. It's quite a strong rotation of the shoulder that moment. Go gently. If you're not comfortable with your arm going that high, have it down lower, that spine. And then if it's comfortable, this time when your hand gets to the top, stay there for a moment, turn, and then bring it down. Once again, recognizing that when we move in the center of the body, it changes the positioning. <coughs> well, so just very gently, trying not to pull your hip out of the line. Now, change sides. There's just any difference between one side of your body and another. There's often those differences for various reasons, but often exercises like this will help to balance the mouth a little bit. So again, it's comfortable adding the turn. You may even feel the effect of that right down the opposite side of your body to the way that you're turning right down through the length of the side of your leg to your ankle. One more time. Once again, just stand. Give your legs a, a little shake. So those last two exercises, and indeed the first swinging exercise that we did, shows that when we focus on the central part, part of our body and turn there, our arms will naturally follow. Um, and so we, we again, we we begin to, to appreciate the significance of this center part of the body in, in many ways. It said that the, 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 the movement is guided from the centre part of the body. So a lot of our attention, a lot of our intention is settled in, in, in the centre of the body. Those were horizontal movement, but it's true vertically as well. So just stand and try and leave the knees soft and to be aware of your pelvis, which is sort of level as you stand here. Now, if you push your hips back, tilt the pelvis forwards, notice how your head goes forwards and then reverse that movement, head goes back. As you do this, there's a slight extension through your back, spine that contracts. But significantly here is particularly from the, from the uh, movement here where your hips have gone back, is that it's gravity that actually pulls your hips down. So, when we start to align ourselves, and I said earlier, we don't get into a fight with the pull of gravity, we can actually begin to use gravity. It's gravity and the pull of gravity on your hips, pulling your hips down, that will ultimately bring, bring your head up. Right. Again, if I show you with the, the, the pole here, if I'm particularly, if I've got a weight on the end of that pole, it could be hard to, to, to lift up. If I can push down, on the other end, the top will come up. 
obviously that's that's a, a, a very simplistic way of looking at it. It's, there's um, lots of nuances to this, but again, a focus of attention in the centre part of our body and a willingness to yield to the, to the gravity I, helps us with this very open, upright posture. And the next two movements make use of this. Please go very carefully. They're both quite strong movements. Start by dropping your weight down again. Push up, let your hands come up a little bit. Push your hips back, so head, shoulders, and finally your hands go forwards and drop down, and then hips dropping down again. Start again, pushing up. This is called rowing a boat in the middle of the lake. This is not a back bend. I'm trying to do this quite big so that you can actually see the mechanics of what I'm doing. You don't have to do it this big, just focus on what's going on in your center, and particularly your back. Don't go so far that you start to strain in your back. It isn't necessarily the case in Tai Chi that we, we value large movements over the bigger movements. Sometimes smaller movements are actually stronger. Your back still supporting the front of your body. Row in the boat. One more time. And then as you come up this time, leave your hands in front of your belly, palm down, turn horizontally and then push the hips back, push your hands forward, swing across and back to the center. It's called polishing the table. Turn, push your hips back, swing your hips across and let them drop down and come back to the beginning posture and this time I'll show you another direction notice how my hips go back and then moving across they drop down and I turn back to the same same thing on the other side I turn push hips back across and back and again very gently with this movement polishing the table try and try not to strain in the shoulders on your back, it's a nice smooth fluid circle, expanding out from your center and back in. This feeling of dropping towards the ground with your hips and your pelvis as you come to the upright position. One more time. And once again, just uh, give your lips a shake. So again, bringing your attention to rest in, in, in your center leads to this awareness of the significance of the center. It's this part of the body that we want to drop towards the ground to root down. It's this part of the body that we want to be able to, to, to move from, we literally center move. Then we're going to change the posture from the parallel posture. Imagine parallel lines going through your legs, through your feet, across the room, like tram lines. Turn one foot out and step on its line with the other foot. So that you feel as though you're standing on the diagonal corners of a square. And once again, you, know, you get that feeling of just dropping. And you may even feel, if you, if you can do that comfortably, there's a little kind of bounce up. So that connection to the ground isn't just about stability. It's also about plumbing into, if you, if, if, if you like, what, what can be seen as a major source of movement, a major source of energy. So 
move your weight into the back leg. Look for that feeling of releasing around the center of your body, lower back, belly, hips, buttocks, thighs and knees. And you may just feel a bit of a push coming up and let that move you into your front leg. Settle there and then wait until you feel the push back. So don't be in a hurry to transfer your weight. And a bit of emphasis on that again, uh, I mentioned earlier that we can take the time with these movements. We start to get these little punctuations, like a, a, a comma in a sentence. And to begin with, it's good to focus quite strongly on those. So in a way we exaggerate them because they're so easily overlooked. But actually, it only takes a moment. Once you get used to the idea, it's an intention to release. So you know, it's, it's quicker than thought, really. But it's good to take a little bit of time as you start the practice to, to remind yourself that you can do this. And this can have an enormous benefit just in our general mobility and moving around during the day. We learn to Tai Chi terms, seek the stillness within the move. Again, focus on the center, focus on this releasing feeling, connection to the ground, and how to cultivate that stillness. We need to go back into your rear foot and you start to settle down. It's almost like a seesaw as you settle down in one foot. In this case, the toes will come off the ground. Place the toes, go forward, settle. Push your back knee forward so your back heel comes off. And as you do that, you'll find you start to get more weight going into your leg. You can have the front foot turned out just a little bit to give more space in your hip and the weight to draw. So, so again, still giving yourself that moment Settling, starting to feel aligned and stable over one leg, and then when you've got that, just bring what we call the empty foot in. If it's your front foot, you draw it in. You step forward, you put your heel down, you lower your toes, gently press, plant the foot into the ground, and move your weight forwards. The back foot is going to be the ball of the foot goes down, the foot goes back and out. Lower your heel. Okay, so we keep the width of the step. Notice that I'm putting my toes down here just to check my posture. Give me a chance to make any corrections. I may, sometimes you can find yourself doing this to come back to this. And as that becomes a smoother process for you, what you may find is that you're able to bring the foot in and perhaps raise in there. If this makes you wobbly, again, you don't have to do this, you can keep the toes down, but you could also, once again, use a little bit of support. Remember that what we're trying to do effectively here is to relax rather than stiffen up. And that's quite difficult to do if you're feeling a bit wobbly and you feel you might fall over. And it's interesting to get that little bit of extra support. It can help even experienced players like myself to just identify, oh, there's a little bit of hold in there or a little bit out of line, and perhaps in a way that you didn't realise. It's very difficult to, to, to keep that awareness. So then try that with your other foot forwards. Imagine the tram lines, turn the opposite foot out, step forward. That angle of the back foot is something you can play around with until it's comfortable. Transferring your weight. The legs fill in and empty. A very common image in Tai Chi that applies to all the movements potentially, is that we're moving through water. So there's just this 
feeling of a slight resistance around us, though the air was thicker than normal, but not a resistance that makes us push hard, like, like sort of push into a wall, but a kind of softer resistance. One that encourages, as being a water does, a, a, a releasing of tightness in muscles and joints and can help to generate, again, that very characteristic flow, but also a, a, a strengthening, a conditioning quality of the inner strength. Beginning to raise your toes and your hands. So one of the, in a way, the, the, the ongoing um, aims, if you like to think a bit like that, is, is, is to cultivate this stronger feeling that we first become aware of deeper in the body. Remember, I've talked about that area around the skeleton, so that it, it spreads through the whole of the body. This is described as inner strength. And it's strength is a difficult term, but it, it has the strength as well as the flow and the continuity of water. And then stepping in, toes down to begin with. And you're raising your foot up. When you do this, when you bring your knee up like that, it's a simple rotation in your hip. And yet you may well find that there's a sort of strain in all the way through the body that, that, that makes you just, just a little bit wobbly. And it can be helpful to think that as your knee comes up, the feeling of your hip dropping down is stronger quite manage it that time. You do need to focus your attention, of course, I'm talking to you. So these things will happen sometimes. <laughs> and then if you're comfortable with, with this, just step through, again, planting the foot, take a few steps forwards or backwards, depending on where you have the space. Placing the foot on the ground, and then that gentle press in as though you're just just planted the seedling and you're pressing in the earth around it. And then change in direction. Remember, when you're going forwards, when the foot goes down, your heel should go down first and then the ball of your foot. But when you're going backwards, it's the opposite way around. It's the ball of your foot first, and then the heel. Being careful not to overstep, especially in the back step. So we're going to use those movements to generate movement in the upper part of the body. Instead of about the, the, the center guiding the movement, shaping the movement, but much of the energy for the movement comes from this uh, sinking down and pushing up, this releasing and feeling the, the push up on the, the, the ground and from the transfer of the weight. And so we want to retain a sense of awareness. And that's a difficult thing to, to, to d develop, but with practice, you'll find that you're, you're more able to, to, to do that and to use your arms without getting distracted from what's happening. So, this time, mirror my movements. Have your right foot forwards. Start with your weight back. Fold your hands over your belly. Push forwards, and it's like a wave coming up from the back foot, pushing your arms out. Just spread them out a bit, open your chest, and then back. This is called pigeon spreads its wings. That wave will work on your elbows, first of all. Drawing your fingers apart. Don't Put your elbows or your hands behind your shoulders and then back. So the movement of your weight generates the principal energy, but also as you do this, feeling changes in the upper body, chest expanding, upper back expanding, and whatever else is there to feel. And once again, maybe with that image of moving through water. 
Tai Chi was once described as that you were swimming on dry land. One more time. And then letting your hands drop aware of the weight of your arms hanging from your shoulders. And this time, as you go forward, letting your arms swing through, it naturally curve. This is fisherman casting in. Nice and smooth, wave-like motions through your body. The moment we're just looking forwards, going forwards and backwards. This time, as you move your weight back, turn your slides, draw your hands across your body. And developing that movement, expanding through the rear side of your body to push your arms up and forwards. Letting the hands sweep down across the front hip and then turning them back. So you trace out this sort of sideways figure of eight pattern. You imagine that in front of your body and your fingers are just gently tracing that movement out. You can imagine your arms flowing into that shape. Some people like to think of it more like the infinity sign in physics and mathematics. Shake out. So have your left foot forwards this time. Starting the game with your weight back. Vision spreads your wings. Your legs move your feet. You're moving through the water. It's feeling that pulse, that rhythm of the movement, particularly in the upper part of your body. Time change into fisherman cast the net. Turn in. And the arms rise up with the figure of eight movement. Try not to stiffen up in your shoulders or your elbows, your wrists or your fingers. So though you're gently stroking the air in front of you with your fingers. We can begin to do that when where the connections in the body so we feel supported, not having to strain. And then this time, who's comfortable for you? And again, you can go forwards or backwards, bring the empty foot in, check your posture, step. Good. Again, bringing your foot in. Step, planting the foot. And again, if it's comfortable and you feel Confident to do this, you can raise your knees, you raise your arms. Take your time, don't rush the movement. Notice that I'm bringing my foot in. I give myself a moment just to check my posture, my alignment, before I think about raising my knee. And then change direction if you haven't done so already.
This exercise, I've, I've done this forwards and then backwards, but it's a very adaptable exercise. You could go diagonally, you could change direction, or if you bring your feet parallel, you can do it side to side. And that can be quite useful again, because you'll notice I've got the wall at my back now. So I'm not touching the wall, but again, it can be quite useful. You know, you know the wall is there to investigate just whether you're still straining to experiment a little bit with this exercise, how far to move your arms and so on and so forth. And if I have a little wobble, I've got the wall there to, to, to support me. Good. So, rubbing your hands together. And this time, tapping over your face. This can help to take some of the stiffness out of the muscles. Over your head and neck. Down to one shoulder. Um, It's also a good way of refocusing your attention into your body. So once you're back with one or both hands, it's as much of your back as you're comfortable with. And then around your hips. And down the outside of your legs and up the inside. And press the light on your belly. And finally the upper part of your chest. And our last exercise just brings us back to the qualities of the basic posture and the post qualities we want in, in all of the postures, in perhaps a simpler way. Embrace tiger, return to mountain, to sink down, push up a little bit, a bit like the wild goose, but just let your shoulders drop, your elbows drop, and bring your hands around so you're holding the ball there and then coming in. And uh, just focusing on this sense of settling and quieting in mind. And then pushing up again, embracing tiger, returning to the mat. Nice and calm, nice and settled. So we're left again with this feeling, this qualities of the postures, the overall quality of the Tai Chi, the alignment, mood, stillness of mind. Just letting your hands come down and stand. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks for joining in. As always, if you do have any questions, please get in touch with me and I should do my best to answer them. But enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much.